Hey everyone, my name is Nathan Pay and welcome to another episode of Blue Ocean Crypto. Today we're going to talk about what claims to be the next generation Web3 gaming console called Polium 1. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, there is a lot of controversy out there right now about this and I'll definitely be covering that in the video, but I wanted to bring this information to you guys here on the channel. So first, let's take a look at the website and then I am gonna jump over to their medium near the end of the video because there is a couple additional pictures there that show the interface and the console more so than the website here. So make sure you guys stay to the very end. So you can see the picture here, it's actually relatively small. They show it with a size comparison with the controller right on top. Now we've already seen Elixir, which is kind of like a Steam for PC. So there's no reason why we couldn't have a piece of hardware kind of accomplish the same thing, but what they claim is that this is going to be a multi-chain gaming console. Now there's a lot of misinformation about that because when this first got announced, people thought, oh, well, all these game development companies are going to have to make games specific for this console. Just like for PlayStation, you have to make PlayStation games, Xbox for Xbox and so on. That's not the case. What they're claiming is that you can actually play it on all these different chains. So if a game is compatible with one of these respective chains that you can see here, then it should in theory work on this console, which is why I think the potential for this could be huge. It looks like this is exactly what we would want from a Web3 gaming console. It seems very promising. It can play lots of different games based on different programming languages, different networks. It has a really clean user interface. But when this first got announced, there was definitely quite the opposite reaction. And in fact, if you do a quick Google search, most of the information that comes up is, is not too positive when it talks about this. So with everything we've looked at so far, it seems very promising to be the next generation Web3 console. But as I mentioned, there's a lot of negative media coverage about this. They really don't have a large social following. So it's gonna be interesting to see the developments over the next couple of years if this comes to fruition. Now, before you get involved in any kind of project, you definitely want to do your own research and make your own educated decision. So here's another piece of controversy, the controller. A lot of people felt this was very lackluster. There wasn't much aesthetics to it, and it kind of felt like a knockoff PlayStation controller. Now, that can be good or bad. Maybe the simplistic controller model was something they were actually going for because they didn't want an overly complex setup or situation. I don't really have much of an opinion on that. I think if the controller works and it feels good, that's all that really matters. But I do like that they have this fingerprint feature on it, which is obviously what attaches and unlocks your wallet, which I think is kind of cool. So here's the roadmap, which is definitely something you always want to take a look at when you're researching a product. And you can see it's going to take quite a while to get through all of this, but there's even going to be staking opportunities. And I like the game tag registration it talks about. And I imagine that has to do with like your username is something that you can register just like an ENS domain. And then instead of a long string wallet address, you know, your friends or you could send or receive NFTs or tokens to your registered gamer tag. I like that concept. They also talk about the Polium One wallet and in parentheses, they have Chrome. So that would lead us to assume that it's going to be a Chrome extension, just like MetaMask. So what I assume is going to happen is you can go to your Binance or your crypto.com or whatever popular exchange you want, purchase your tokens, simply send it to your Polium One Chrome extension wallet. And ideally, then that would now show up on your gaming console. That to me seems like a pretty intuitive way to get your tokens or your NFTs onto the platform. So I like that they showed that. Now it shows that the product launch won't happen until 2024. And in fact, you can't even pre-order it at all yet. And if there's one thing we've learned about crypto projects, they tend to take a little longer than they promise. So, I mean, we could be waiting up to three years for this to happen. So it's gonna be interesting to follow it and see the developments, but we still have a long ways to go. Now, they're first to market with this. So of course, generally when you're first to market, there can be a lot of controversy, but this also paves the way for a lot of other big names to come into this space. Like imagine if Sony or Samsung were to announce a Web3 next generation console. Seeing that it's already been announced that it's possible by Polium One, this could make it a lot easier for some of these big names to start thinking about doing it. So I'm gonna be really excited, not just about the Polium One, but the fact that this has already been announced as something that's possible 
and now it's kind of leading the way for other companies to get on board. So taking a look at their socials, they don't really have too much of a following. There's about 2,500 Twitter followers, very few on their medium. But I did want to show you guys a couple cool pictures on the medium because there was some additional information on here that wasn't on the website. Like taking a look at the controller, you can kind of see it from a bunch of different angles. You can actually see the top four buttons. It really does kind of look like a plain or generic PlayStation controller, but it seems like it would be a little bit lighter. And if it works, it works, right? Like, I don't think I necessarily care how complex the controller is. It's how does it feel? So it is nice to kind of get a bunch of more different shots here from that. Now, this is a picture that wasn't on the website. It actually shows the marketplace and you can see there's trending, music, utility. There's even one that says vehicle and then gamer tag. So what gets me curious about this is the buying and selling of these gamer tags. Is there, are they trying to create maybe an economy around that? You know, might it be smart when you can first do this to try to claim and buy a whole bunch of different gamer tags that you could then sell back to different players? Maybe those gamer tags are actually attached to certain games. So if you were to sell your gamer tag, it's like selling your console with your game collection. We don't really have too much information on that, so I'm just speculating, but I did think that was kind of interesting. Also, taking a look at the wallet here, you could, it shows the cross-chain capability of the console. You can see there's a, some balance on Solana, some on Ethereum, there's even a bridge and a swap. So basically, the idea is you're going to be able to do everything you need to within the gaming console to bridge tokens over to different networks, to use them from your wallet. And in concept, that sounds great, but I'm gonna be curious to see if there's any kind of hiccups along the way and how easy that can be accommodated. You know, we have to think about things like liquidity and security on the bridge. So there's a lot of really nuanced details that have to work perfectly in order for this concept to really nail it. But once again, it's showing us that it's possible and that's exciting. Now, one easy thing to think about that makes this more plausible is if you compare it to Elixir. So Elixir is a new platform that a lot of you people are starting to get familiar with where it's just like a Steam for PC for play to earn games. Well, the Polyam One is really just doing that same thing, except their console is essentially the computer or the desktop that you would be using instead of running it like through Elixir. So like I said, conceptually, this is very possible. There's no reason why this can't be done. It's just, we don't really have a big brand name behind it or the authority. So it doesn't quite have that same impact, but I'm still gonna be pre-ordering this just to see what happens, to be part of the journey, because this really was the first company to announce a Web3 next generation console. So I hope you guys found this useful. Like I said, whether it's a scam or legitimate, that's up for everyone to decide. I'm sure as they release more information, maybe we can gain more confidence in this. But really what I'm most excited for is what this means for the play to earn space. Now that we see conceptually that something like a next generation Web3 console is possible and game companies don't have to develop games specifically for it, these consoles can simply run games that are that work really on any network in a whole series of programming languages, I feel like this really opens the door up for a lot of other companies to come in and maybe even do a better job. So I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this. Definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know, do you think this is a scam? Is this something that you're gonna get involved in? What's your opinion on the Polium one? And I appreciate you guys joining us here today. Thanks so much and until next time, cheers.